الحمد لله رب العالمين وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين everybody السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله how's it going today it's it's going it's going well so today's been a good day it's starting to heat up a little bit so um you you can hear me okay yeah yeah i had to switch out my uh oh. i had it on speaker now i had to put it on earphone go okay yeah no everything is well um just adjusting the seasons are changing just adjusting to what the yeah. weather is going to look like so today is a lot warmer so i always think about okay how prepared are you <laughs> for when this summer hits right mm -hmm. um but other than that no everything's good i am choosing to be a uh obedient student to life <laughs> taking in all the lessons paying attention and um seeing like okay what is this supposed to unfold for me in this season so everything's good I i'm grateful i'm grateful yeah. that i have the awareness to embrace it and go okay let's yeah. do it and then yeah. i have some wonderful projects that I'm, I can't wait until it is time for me to share it. Like one will be ready, inshallah, um, next month. The other one, I'm not putting a, I'm putting a goal date on it, but I'm not pressuring myself to rush through it. But one okay. is finished okay. and I can't wait to come back and share that with our uh, uh, wealth creation preservation family. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. That's good. Because uh, we, we have to have our realizations manifestations actualizations all of those things they've got to be yes. i've come to i've come to increasing realizations as well we thank allah yeah. uh and so mashallah we'll, we'll get to it you know you you work and it's so important too that like the video you shared also what, what's important what, what is like what it? you shared the recording you shared uh the 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 one the audio itself the Brian Chase, the Brian Tracy audio that oh, you just okay. shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, can you see? Can you see? Oh no, no, I I, I got it right here. Uh, I'll just tell I'll just tell everybody what it what it was. Uh, it's actually a twenty five minute piece by Brian Tracy, "How to Master the Art of Goals Setting." That's how it's mentioned on the YouTube. So if you want to listen to the rest of it, uh, how to master. The Art of Goals Setting with Brian, with Brian Tracy. Yeah, I do. I love that. Uh, you know, it's your, it, I, it, I actually sent you that sent you that link. Uh, you you have it there. Yeah, you did. Uh, you did. I, I saw I, it when I opened, okay, opened good, it up. Good. Yeah, but I, I, I tricked you because I did it earlier. Normally, I do it, you know, right on the cusp of the broadcast, right? And I, yes. I sent it real, early, real early today. So it's like, oh, well, you he hasn't read it yet. <laughs> yeah, you got to go back down the ladder. But let me get out the way and let you do what you, what you okay. do. And uh, I'll be back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum assalam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم to all of our listeners on Blog Talk as well as those that are following us currently via Facebook or YouTube Live. I am Camila Shuaib. I'm the CEO and owner of Love is Always the Subject. And my goal is to provide tools for the preservation and the documentation of our human experiences for spiritual transformation. Um, I believe that this, this time and space that we're in now, um, I have to first start off by being so amazingly grateful uh, to Allah for the resources of family, the resources of, you know, my extended family, bloodline and ancestry for being diligent in having a system that has evolved over time, right? So um, I, I say that because this mentioning of the video, the audio that was shared with the blog talk about write it down, 
right? And journaling, I have created a very much intentional relationship with journaling. I've always journaled, right? But it wasn't journaling with a very clear intention. It was a space for, as a, as a young child, it was a space for me to explore my imagination. It was a space for me to um, create a whole, an altered universe. Um, and I've always had a severely vivid imagine, imagination. And uh, I, that definitely attributed to my creativity, um, my ability to find joy in the slightest moments or joy from within myself. I didn't at the time, of course, know that it is also an amazing tool for us to create the life that we seek to create. Um, this, this creation of this life that we seek to create, when we start to understand that it is so very much directly connected to um, being inspired, that Allah inspires all of the things that are good, that in this goodness, this is an opportunity that we collect letters, letters meaning individual letters and alphabets to expand an idea. You know, we put these alphabets together to hold the vessel of the vision, right? So when we say certain, you know, we, we are in an English, I'm born and raised with English, but then Islam brings this beautiful language of Arabic, Quranic Arabic, let's be very specific. This beauty of Quranic Arabic that is another vessel that holds an entire universe in one single word, right? So we use the English language because that is what we were birthed with. But then as we have evolved and have grown and have been given this gift of Al-Islam, we have this other language that can't be compared to anything else. And that is Quranic Arabic, right? And so when we look at, there's a meaning to each and every letter and each letter when placed and partnered with other letters unlocks a whole nother uh, reality, a whole new way of being. And this is the gift that we have. And then we have been gifted with the resources of teachers who understood the power of these vessels of words that it can shape an entire community. It can shape an entire universe. And so now we have this opportunity to use the keys that they set up for us within this period of time. And I can't help but to think about those that will come after me as a result of this foundation and they will take it to even another level, right? So here we are right now, just, just, just to further just really get us to understand the, the beauty of this experience that we're having. Like I'm talking to you right now from a computer. This is a means of communication, a means of staying connected, right? That there was a time when, and, and, and on top of that, there's no wires. Like I don't have, I plug it up to charge the battery and there's no wires connecting it to a stable ground, right? It's not grounded in, got to plug it in the wall in order to even use it. It is operating off of the energy waves within the room. There's an unseen connector that is allowing me to communicate with you at this very moment. Now, at the time, this, this invention that we're experiencing right now, it started from ages ago, right? Before we even thought that there was a possibility to see the individual that you're talking to, let's just go back to the landline. Let's just go back to the telephone and the, you know, the rotary dial to the push button and so forth. It had to be connected to something in order for us to communicate with each other. This wasn't something that was a big deal. Then you look at movies with, you know, from the 80s and so forth. There was this box connected to the car that had the wire in order for us to, you know, the mobile phone. It was a huge ordeal. We just watched a movie Mother's Day and he had a mobile phone in his car that was connected 
to the dashboard and he was, ex you know, expressing how phenomenal this was that this rent rental car had a phone in it. And, and so it evolved over time. This evolution of us having access to expand our ability to communicate and connect with each other has expanded because someone said, well, what if the person that I'm communicating with, I could see them when I'm talking to them? Well, what if I am able to send a letter through the computer and not have to mail it? Well, what if like all of these different moments of what ifs, it did not exist, but it had to evolve from an, an established experience in order to bring us to the next level of understanding it, right? This is what's happening to us in this, this human experience. So in my younger years, and all of us, I want us to go back, like the biggest thing we could ever learn about ourselves is to revisit our youth, revisit our, um, our environment that nurtured us through childhood up into adulthood, that in that experience, there were moments that shape very much a lot of how we move and how we think, the decisions we make and the decisions that we don't make. It allows us to explore another universe of our past self, right? To either undo certain things that we had took, taken in in our mind as being real and true to us moving to a space where it's like, well, the possibilities <coughs> are, and are still there for us to explore, right? And so here we are now with this language, and now we have the ability to write our life, right? So when he speaks of the goals and what is it that you want, what is it that you seek to experience, what is it that you um, have in your mind that's unseen, write it out. Write it out and be clear, right? Be specific. And it's not just write it down and then it's like, you know, leave it for the tooth fairy. No, it is now an energetic, it's like dialing a phone number that you have now identified what you are seeking to connect with in this external experience. So you had to pull it out of yourself, write it down, that's dialing the number. And now it is activating, okay, this is what has to happen in order to connect with the thing that you were holding internally to produce this external experience. And in doing so, there's an effort, there's an activation that takes place. And also keeping in mind that we, let's not forget, it's not us doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm talking about the good stuff because I, you know, I am I am going to stick to the idea and the fact that if you're here, you are seeking good. Right? So if it is a suggestion for something that is good and something that'll that will support your way of life as a Muslim, something that will support humanity, something that will grow you, expand your capacity to experience the best parts of this life. I'm talking to you, right? So we're not holding space for, you know, well, I want to do X, whatever that X is that is not good for you. That ain't what I'm talking about. You can write that down and do that too. But we not say a lot didn't do that. You did that. Okay. So to be clear that when that shows up, you have to feel this overwhelming bubbling of gratitude that is unmatched because you know that the source of this good idea, great idea, beautiful gift, the, the, the inspired thing that said, connect these things to create this experience comes from Allah. So we're having a conversation with Allah regularly, right? The moment the good idea, ha and I don't, there's no such thing as a bigger, there's too big or too small idea. All the ideas, if it is supporting you reaching your highest self, your highest goal, the, the most excellent experience, then that's from Allah. 
So this idea of gratitude, this idea of taking time every day, not just when you're feeling down, taking time every single day in the way that you make a lot, every single day, take a moment for gratitude every day. See, my neighbors are having a, having a good time. It's a swimming pool right out front from me. So it's like they're having a, an experience of excitement, right? And I love it. I think it's great. It reminds me to tap into my joy every time I hear them. So I, I say that, that at that moment, you know, when you really look at, you know, I'm going to take a moment for gratitude. Sometimes we pull out the gratitude card <laughs> when things are low. Be like, okay, I must not be. Let me let me put a little gratitude ointment on this pain, right? And that's good, and that's good. You should, if that's the thing that you go to. So I want to say that, in addition to that, that it's like your multivitamin. The gratitude is like the multivitamin because you want to stay in constant remembrance constant remembrance of being grateful for the good idea. Like the when a lot inspires you to get up a little earlier if us a lot. When Fedra hits it's like a lot say, you know, get up a little early. I got something for you. Get up a little earlier. Just just read a little Quran before you pray or take some time to think or, or journal the 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 grateful things that are happening in your life. Or just take a moment and sit with yourself and take deep breaths and thank a lot for your lungs to be functioning. Thank a lot for this comfy bed, this cozy blanket. Thank a lot for the, the good coffee or who's bringing you your coffee. Or thank you, you know, like take a moment and sit in that and you will start to recognize how this, you know, he was speaking about in the video about <laughs> Socrates dunking him in the, in the water, that it, it, it feels comfortable when you choose to wade in the abundance or the flow of this environment. And that's what it feels like. It feels like a good bath. It feels like a nice swim in the lake, right? It feels like a, a ride on the cruise ship. It's like, ooh, like all of this for me? Like, really? Okay, like, let me explore that. So in that moment, when you take it like the daily vitamin, when those challenges come, which they will all the time, that's what life is, right? That when they show up, it's like I, my, my gratitude immune system is strong enough to stave off the illness that comes with the challenge. So when it shows up, because I have been taking my everyday multi-gratitude vitamin daily, that when the challenge shows up and it's like, I have no idea how I'm going to get through this. Like, is this one, it's a tough one. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do with this. You recognize that you have constantly been fortifying your soul, your life, your mind, your journal, your, your Quranic references to keep, so that when it shows up, it's like, yeah, I don't like it, but let's check this out. Allah created me in excellence. Okay. So it's not that I can't do it. Shaitan threatens you with lack. It's not that I don't have enough to do it. That, that if with if the acid and tech wings, with every diff with every difficulty comes ease, like that they're hand in hand. Okay, all right, God. Okay, so you're not giving me a burden bigger than I can handle. Okay, so it feel like I can't handle this. It feel like I don't have the capacity to do what's done. But I know you don't lie. There's nothing present in any parts of my life. That says Allah is not telling the truth. That this in this book, <laughs> without doubt, is true without doubt, right? So what I look like having doubt, like this ideal of self-doubt about my abilities when Allah created me. So the doubt is not coming from Allah. The environment may, 
feed me a narrative about myself that is not true. But we know what is true. Allah is truth. Allah is haq. All truth, like period, right? So I have to fortify myself. I don't have to just pull this. Like my mom is the herbal guru. And I mean, I'm sticking to this metaphor. I am a, I am a child product of metaphors from uh, my beloved daddy. Metaphors, I have fun with them. I, it makes me that much aware of this living experience. Like the moment I said, I said, what's that like? It's like, and the Quran shares these explorative experiences. Like it's like this. And I go, oh, talking my language, right? So my mom with the herbs, when we get sick, you know, she got them. She, she know, she know what to do. She know what, okay, you got to take this and grind this and juice that, eat less of this and more of that. Like she has it, right? But the one thing that she says every single time, without doubt, without, like, it's not going to happen the first day you take it. Give me the herbs. I'm thinking, okay, well, I drink this ginger juice. Come tomorrow, we will, and I can jump back out there. She told every time she said, it's not, it's not, it doesn't work that way. It has to get into your system. It has to get into your system. What is our system? Our way of being, our existence. Who I know this is good stuff because I'm feeling it, right? It's this good stuff. It's good stuff, right? So it's it's it, and, and, you know, and Allah is the Lord of all systems, right, of knowledge. So to understand yourself and how you absorb what you're taking in, it's beautiful. So this unfolding of paying attention to our existence, the conversations happens at the moment that you open your eyes. Explore. What are you feeling right now? What do you need in order to engage this word? Let's focus on what we already have access to, because whatever it is that you're pulling up that you have access to in that is the answer to a good day. The goal, if the goal is a good day, let's reverse engineer. What do you need to have a good day? And in that you create this system of gratitude that runs every time because it's not going to hit just when it's hurting right you're going to have to put it in your system and then you putting that in your system then the output when the challenge comes up you'll know exactly what to do so may Allah bless us to be inspired to recognize cleanse our physical eyes and our spiritual eyes to recognize the things that we should be grateful for so that we can see, have a wider vision about this life experience that we have been blessed with, that we have been gifted with. And then as a result, that the obstacles that show up in our life, it's like, oh, this is a, this is a part of this experience. And I have a system in place to be able to conquer those challenges, those brief obstacles, not so that they would linger, not so I just put something immediate on it and then stop it. No, I have a system in place in order to counter that, in order to, to combat it, in order to stay in a constant state of wellness. And with that, I'm going to call the man back into the room. <laughs> and we're back Alhamdulillah. and we're back i mean i'm good all right so, so you know what you know what happened i'll tell you exactly why i was delayed you started talking about something okay. that i was thinking about talking about is as a part of my sort of like at the ending i i was trying to rush and put the final little touches on it but it, it, it didn't really come all the way through so i didn't want to uh, as my mama um, man, I have mercy on her. Would say, don't don't half ass it. So don't don't half ass it. So, <laughs> so I got so I got got let that go. But I tell you, I'm threatening to do a do a. My whole presentation would just be simply camel backing on your <laughs> yes, on, on, on yes. your presentation. But when you start talking about those systems, there's there's everything. I got I got to move on, or I'm, I'll try to do it. So <laughs> thank you very much. You're and welcome. We out. All right. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yes, so beautiful, so wonderful. We thank Allah. We have this dua.
ربنا فرم القرآن ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وزورياتنا قراءة عين وجعلنا المتقين إمام والله give us mates and offspring that will be beautiful in our eyes and give us the grace to be examples for righteous people alhamdulillah when I see that one and hear that one uh, I'm reminded that Allah has answered that dua for me alhamdulillah uh, now if I can just get her to mute her phone would be good <laughs> so so let's go uh, I'm hoping I'm you know inshallah Allahu alam I would love to, I would love to complete this subject today, and, and the subject being uh, introduction to spiritual physics. We've been focused, we focused on imagination. We are a little bit beyond imagination now, but we're just simply continuing under the under the theme and in the interest of this, which is. Spirituality, spirituality is the physics that we don't yet understand, and so what we're we're sort of we're still continuing under that under that theme, and the goal is of course to for me when when I talk about it, so drawing a straight line, a straight line. For, you know, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Drawing a straight line from the idea of, you know, what what we imagine and what we are able to create. I have to say, I know some of the, some of the language that I might use and some of the things that we some of the things that we speak of. You say, yeah, yeah, that's the same way. So even like you know Brian Tracy, who I who I who I you know I. I studied stuff from him way way back i think psychology of success was one of the uh, early ones because i've already i've always been actually devoted to uh self-image psychology uh personal achievement those i mean i was mashallah i can almost say from the eighth grade uh i can say from the eighth grade that i was with, starting with like maxwell maltz and psycho cybernetics so i you know i've been kind of kind of steeped in that uh, tradition most almost all my life i am like you know mashallah Allah's will to each is a goal to which is turning so uh but i'm saying that to say that i am very familiar with it i'm very familiar with the other uh, uh, how can you say systems that are out there you know law of attraction you know the the secret uh, manifestation I, I get it. I understand. There's a reason why we're attracted to it. Why we want the issue of energies and da da da. And so, not not being dismissive of it at all, because all of those represent, uh, in, in some cases, a partial completion. The only thing that has to complete is the Quran. Let's, let's be real clear about that, the Quran and what Muhammad has given us, but. The abstraction of those ideas from what we have received vis-a-vis -vis al-Islam, uh, I say in our in our time, I'll call it, uh, is not is not complete. So there's still there's there's, there's still um, there's still much truth that that is being drawn from other uh, let's call it spiritual systems and the like, and and they strike us so formidably because. It, they have this ring of truth uh, in our to our psyche, our soul, our heart, our mind, our nature. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, but let me put it in the words of the hood: Don't get lost in the sauce. <laughs> Don't get lost in the sauce. Okay, so what? What's 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 true and what's good, etc. Another thing: There's a saying. It's not an Islamic saying, but I, I, I give it a lot of credence. Whatever is true is not new, and whatever is new is not true. So if anybody tell you something that ain't never been, never been thought of before, uh, I, I'll take a second look. Take a second look at it. <coughs> but I, okay, so enough of that. Uh, so moving, moving on. This is the thesis under which we are we are moving uh, right here. Spirituality is the physics we don't yet understand. This so, so alhamdulillah, Allah, and you know, as recently as the last like 36, 48 hours. 
you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I say this in all humility, there's no boast, uh, led me to another mind, not my mind, another mind person uh, that is addressing something. He's like, oh, yeah, this, this, this is the answer that I need for this element over here. And so by the grace of Allah, alhamdulillah, uh, someone again with, with part of the answer, you know, with part of the, with the expression of part of the answer. It's like we have it, but sometimes we don't have the expression uh, for it, that vessel, those words, the vocabulary uh, for the concept, the principle, the idea. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us or, or bring out from us the language, the, the carriage, the vehicle for the idea that you intuitively and that you have a feel for, but it, but it's uh, as uh, Iqbal uh, Muhammad, Alama Muhammad Iqbal says, uh, inarticulate feeling, inarticulate feeling, ah, it feels like, but you don't have the word, inarticulate feeling. So sometimes the feeling itself will give birth to the word uh to uh to express what it is that you feel and sometimes you will hear out there in the environment from somewhere the word or words that uh oh, that is expressing what i'm feeling right so alhamdulillah so so that's a that's a constant uh, occurrence for for the seeker for the asker for the student for those who inquire Right in, in in the name of Allah, so let's just move on with what we have to share 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 uh, today. Uh, so we went the last week we went through this. This comes from a Bernardo Castro uh, of the Essentia Foundation. I recommend I recommend him to you if you're ready for abstraction. Right, watch out for the fish bones, but it is it is not mainstream. Uh, you know whatever, popcorn talk. <clears throat> um, so yeah, moving on. So we went through it. I'm not going to go all the way through it. Let me just see if I can get away with just speaking to the just the, the red letters there, right? Because what this is talking about is how, how things, uh, you know, from the foundation of the nature of creation, how they come into reality, right? Uh, and I know that there's, I just said, I just use the term popcorn. You know, there are the, the other language that is not knitted more, more scientifically and logically, et cetera, moving from that bottom to the top, I'm, I'm less trusting uh, of it. And certainly it has to rest well. It has to harmonize well with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has either expressed or implied in the Quran. So trust this. I wouldn't even mention the name Bernardo Kestra to you if I didn't already have the sense. It doesn't mean that every when you you get to it that you, yeah I see what the Imam is saying. You may not say hey, you might you might say what the hell was he thinking about when he's talking. About well, if you're that far away from, him, then you should know right away. You should turn around as soon as you get to it and you say ah oh, no, I can't mess with that. Well, just go ahead and make that U-turn and check out. It's okay because you've been warned by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Quran. Approach not that about which you have no knowledge. That's the Quran telling you. If you have no knowledge, realism, you ain't got no business messing with it, right? Also, when the wise man spoke to Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, he said, how can you have patience with that about which your understanding is not yet complete? So if you have no knowledge and you have no understanding of the domain, then back out of it, hang out with me, ask me some questions, you know, you can email me, sabilila at AOL.com for clarification. I will, inshallah, reply to you. But I got to move on uh, based on time we have today. Uh, so I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna jump on these red letters. If you weren't with us last week, then I say go find the archive. Whatever medium you're reaching us on right now, then in that medium, you'll also be able to find the archive for all of this. But let's go. So the uh, the expectations and beliefs, right? That's... That's the key. Uh, what are your expectations? What are your beliefs, right? What happens is what it is that you're trying to accomplish, it gets filtered. It gets filtered. And what, what's filtered, that is you're starting with these possibilities and what what filters it, what how, how far what you aspire to rises, it moves up through and 
up to and through the levels according to your expectations and beliefs. Wherever you run out of expectation and belief for as far as that is concerned, then the creative flow of what it is you're trying to bring into existence, it stops right there because you have not provided the opening for which that thing to move for that thing to move from abstract to concrete. And the way that things move from abstract to concrete, action is all is definitely involved. There's no magic in the context of this. There is action that's involved, but those actions are co are coinciding with your level of expectation and belief. If you don't have the expectation and belief, then you won't have the behavior consistent with what you need to do to keep it pushing. Uh, I gotta I gotta go with that kind of language so you can stay with me. Uh, so so the possibility, so the fuel. The source of the fuel for our creativity, that is something coming into existence as an original product of ours, uh, the fuel for it is our expectations and belief. We run out of expectation and belief, we run out of fuel, and the process stops, right? Uh, so because what happens is everything that we expect and believe and act in accordance with what is true for its law, we'll say more about that as we go, what is true for its law, then it congeals into a particular reality. And that has everything to do with the, the, the issue of quantum. We didn't, we didn't go all the way into it, but as he's pointing out, the process of your quantum physics calls it wave function collapse, right? Just look it up and get some sense of it point is, all existence first only exists as possibility. That's all. Possibility and potential. Everything. The universe in its totality. All these phenomena that we see, feel, taste, touch, smell, measure, quantify, etc. They are all manifestations of something that is fundamentally wave and particle at the base. But it has congealed into whatever it is that we're experiencing because something happened, I'll just I have to abbreviate it that way. Something happened to make that automobile come into existence, that that chair, that that light, that microphone, whatever. It came into by someone filtering their expectation and belief and their scientific understanding of what it takes to bring this thing about. They stayed with it, they planned, they acted, they planned, they acted, they planned, they acted until it congealed into the particular reality that we see. Why? Because they had a belief system that ran from the, the possibility in their expectation and belief for them to continue to act, 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 act until the thing was actually in their hands. That's how it works. That's how it works. <coughs> so he concludes, the reality you experience is a function of your deeply ingrained belief system. Right, your deep. What is it that you deeply think that you have no doubt about? Whatever you're talking about, doing something, achieving something, accomplishing something, creating something. How much doubt do you have about it? Right. If you have no doubt about it, just keep it going. It's it's coming. It's it's on the way, and keep acting in accordance with a plan that's intended to make it come. You keep doing what you're doing, and it's just a matter of time because we live in space time. It's just a matter of time before you will have it, right? It will only stop when you stop expecting it and when you stop believing it at that next level, whatever it might be. Because every time you come to a door, then you have to turn a knob, open a door, you have to know, know the combination, whatever it is you need to know in order to get through that door. Uh, it will come by virtue of your expectations and beliefs that are deeply held at that level about that thing. If you don't have that level of expectation and belief at that level about that thing, you're not going any further. That's it. And the thing that removes doubt is knowledge. Of course, Allah is in it all. But knowledge is what removes doubt. And, and, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah told us this, when he said, thus did we show Abraham the powers and the laws of the heavens and the earth that he might have yaqeen, that he might have conviction and certitude. So what gives one conviction and certitude? Knowledge of the powers and the laws of the heavens and the earth. 
The more of the knowledge of the laws of the powers of the heavens and the earth you have, the more conviction you have, the more expectations, the more uh, beliefs, because you are believing and acting and expecting on the basis of the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And it is true. It's true. So that's so so whatever you're devising or designing or expecting or believing, you gotta make sure that that's true to the nature of creation and that you're not you know operating on some kind of illusion all right all right so so that, that's so much we're going to say about that because we spent last week uh, covering that whole thing but let's go to something further now here here's a, a an image that applies to everything that i'm saying this applies to everything i don't care doctor lawyer engine chief engineer dentist entrepreneur doesn't matter athlete doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's everything, right? Let's just let's walk through some of the, the, the mapping here, right? In the upper upper left, it says the game, the hierarchy, the aim. Everything, everything. You you think of anything right now. You it doesn't matter. Helmets. I'm just I'm just grabbing something. Helmets, right? <coughs> helmets. Okay. Helmet. A helmet is a thing, right? And that helmet, that wasn't the only helmet that ever that was ever made or that ever existed. That helmet came from some manufacturer. Okay, so that manufacturer is in the helmet game. The manufacturer is in the helmet game. You understand? So, so each one of these just represent different ways of saying the same thing. So whatever it is that you're involved with, if you're talking about stocks, you're, you're, you're in the whatever, the stock game, the equities game, doesn't matter. You're in insurance, same thing. You're in manufacturing, same thing. You're in sales, same thing. It's the game. That's your game. That's your game. So that should be enough. It's like whatever. And so in every game, there is a hierarchy and there is an aim, Right? So you can call the hierarchy the game. You can call, you can call the the aim the game. Whatever the aim is, that's the game. The name of the game is the aim. The name of the game is the aim, right? Whatever. Basketball. You know, basketball. The name of the the name of the game is quote unquote in the world is basketball. But what's the aim of the game? What's the aim of the game? The aim of the game that is the game. Whatever the aim of the game, that's the game. Period. So you can say, oh, we're playing basketball. Okay. I'm an alien. I don't know. What do you mean? Right? Well, then you have to be able to tell the one who has no context for it. They'll tell, okay, well, the aim is to X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X. All right. So you got that. So hierarchy, hierarchy gave it. So, so, so I'm saying anything can go in this box. It just doesn't matter. Uh, bamboo chairs. Okay. That should be enough. Whatever comes to your mind, you should see it in the context of uh, a, a total system of things that uh, is devoted to that. All right. All right. Now, in every game, there's an apex performer, there's a model, there's an archetype, right? So whatever, you know, the uh, uh, whatever. Um, I stay with basketball. Whatever. So you have people who make basketballs. You have people who make basketballs, right? So you gotta go look. Oh, okay. We 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 watch the air. We watch the air. The Michael Jordan uh, uh, quasi biopic, at least one part of it. So it's like, so you had Converse, and you had uh, I forget who the other uh, Adidas, right? Converse, Adidas, and I don't even think Reebok was in the game as of, as of that time. And Nike, and Nike was the was on the third level third tier with only 17% of the market at, at that time. The big dog was Converse. And the next after that was Adidas. And Adidas was put on the map because of Run, DMC, and the rest of those, those kind of folks. Uh, so the point is that the apex performer in the tennis shoe game uh, was Converse as of that time. And and the issue of it was Converse, uh, and then the peak of, of the game, of the tennis shoe game, was running shoes. <clears throat> running shoes, right? All right. So that was the game, you know, and, and Apex Performer was Converse, right? 
So then the model that you're trying to get with is Converse and Adidas and blah, blah, blah. So the archetype for it was Converse. Da, da, da. So in every game, in every game, taking game the way I just said it, it's like you need to know who's the who's at the top of that game. Are you what game are you in? And that's the thing you need to know. What what game are you? What game are you in? I'll say playing, but it ain't no joke. It's it's serious. Are you what? Okay, and who's on the top of that? Who's the apex performer in that? You know. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's it. So this is what you need to know. You need to know what your game is. And you don't know your game until you know what the aim of your game is. Once you know what that is, now you can go looking for, and who's the apex performer? What is the ultimate model for the aim of the game that I'm in? Who and what is the archetype? And I'm saying this to say it can be absolutely anything. You can be a sewing machine maker. Whatever. Okay, let's move on. All right, so now <clears throat> this little pyramidal structure here is the, <clears throat> the ladder, let's call it, that you have to climb in order to be on top of the game. In order to realize the aim of the game, you have to move from the lower echelons to the upper echelons, right? And this has to do with your your state of mind and heart, as and particularly your expectations and beliefs, right? <clears throat> you, whenever you start, whatever it is that you start, you start at the bottom. You don't start at the top. It just doesn't matter. And everybody that's on the top did not start there. They moved from the bottom to the top. And anybody in the future who moves to the top, they will move to the top from wherever they are, and it all begins at the bottom. Okay, so whatever game you're in, you need to you need to understand, well, where am I in this stratification? Where am I in this progression? Okay, so expectations and beliefs apply on all levels, because remember, uh, the concretization, the realization, the actualization, and I'm going to put big air quotes, the manifestation of what it is that you're trying to do, it's going to filter up according to the level of uh, belief you sustain as you move up. Because if as you move up, you will move up because you, uh, you acquired and you maintain the expectations and beliefs appropriate for your movement from A to B. And if you're going to move from B to C, you're going to have to sustain the expectations and, and beliefs and achieve the competencies that need to be achieved at level B. And that will move you filtering based on those beliefs and competencies up to level C, right? And at level C, you have to maintain the expectations and beliefs necessary and acquire the competencies uh, appropriate to level D. If you don't do that, then you're going to stop wherever you are. In fact, I think that they actually, there is a book actually called uh, that. Uh, I think it's the Peter Principle. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the Peter Principle. This was decades ago. The Peter Principle, and basically the Peter Principle is everyone rises to the level of their own incompetence. Everyone rises to the level of their own incompetence. You're going to keep, I mean, I mean, I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but there's just too many examples right in front of us right now. You heard me talking a lot about basketball. <clears throat> okay, the Warriors out. So, okay. The Warriors out because the Warriors didn't have the competency to be able to move to the next level. Uh, in terms of whatever the reason may be, that's fine. And they rose to the level. So, they were a second round. <clears throat> they were a second round NBA team a postseason second round NBA team this year. Maybe they were that all year. <clears throat> but the point is, the, <laughs> the bus stops here. And so we had to get off the bus. That's that. Okay. Now look at Boston and look at LA. And again, you look at Denver and look at Miami, right? It's like this scale applies to what I'm talking about. Because everybody is getting off 
at the level that their competency and their confidence fails. When their expectation, their beliefs, and their competencies do not match what's required to go to the next level, the bus stops here. This is your stop. Okay? Masha Allah. That's, that's how it goes, right? And so whoever's able to fill out all of these movements in their game, they're going to succeed, right? So everybody starts at the level of unconscious incompetent. Everybody. Everybody starts at the level where they don't know and they don't know what they don't know. Some of them don't know that they don't <laughs> that they don't know, but some of them don't know what they don't know. But then you get uh, uh, then you get to if when you succeed in finding out what it is that you don't know and learn a little more about what it is that you don't know, and then you become competent in that that you used to be ignorant of, and you maintain the expectation and beliefs. Now you're next level. The next level is that you're conscious incompetent. What does that mean? It means that yes, I know I know a lot or rather, pardon me, I know more than I knew at level one, but I I have to practice more of whatever it is at this next level. And whatever it is that got me off that first level, I have to practice, practice, practice. And I have to sustain my belief and my expectation that I can achieve and accomplish this at this second level But I do recognize that I will continue to make mistakes as I practice because I have not perfected what it is that I just learned about that I didn't know that I didn't know before. So I am deemed to be a conscious incompetent. It's like, nah, I haven't mastered it. I don't fully have it down. I'm still practicing it, but I'm aware when I make a mistake. When I, oh man, you didn't do that right. Okay, try it again. I didn't do it, try it again. Oh, you got it right that time. Oh yeah, good. Now, when you get it to a point where you are making fewer and fewer mistakes and you feel this expectation and belief at the level where you can move up to the next level, the movement to the next level will be where you have your habits and your practices have brought you to a point where you rarely miss, you rarely fail, you rarely whatever, you rarely fail in that particular situation at that particular level. Okay, you move up to the level of conscious competent. Conscious competent is someone who knows and they, they've got the they got the habits, they've got the habits down to the point where as long as they're paying attention, they got it straight. So they are conscious competent, right? So the, 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 the conscious incompetent is one who's aware of what they now are not doing properly that they just learned that they didn't know before. Okay, so let me keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. Now I, I, I know when I'm making a mistake, so I'm a conscious incompetent. Okay, yeah, I know, my bad, right? But now once you get off that level and you're ready to go to the next level, so you are now a conscious competent. That is, you have the competencies, you have the habits, you have, I mean, so many of these, 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 it, I'm, I'm staring with the NBA because it's, it's out there for so many of us. People thought, oh, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just commentary. This is just commentary. Look, I'm, I'm not the special. I got people I can <laughs> cue you into that they know, but I know enough by listening that, that, and, and, and my inarticulate feeling about it to be able to say as much as I'm saying. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga, right? Jonathan Kaminga, who is a you know a player, twenty year old player, you know Warriors. You know he has some hot spots and some hot shots, and you know he's got that that, that kind of John Morantish kind of uh, competency. That's another example to walk through this process. Uh, but Jonathan Kaminga, Warriors. I heard one commentator talking about said he's got so much skill an ex-warrior an ex-warrior leader was was doing this commentary he has so much skill so much ability so much athleticism so much blah 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 but he just needs to learn more about this part right here and he would be really really effective and it is the roof that the sky is the limit of his potential but he's just got to get this part right and there's so many throughout the whole the whole uh game that I like that. But the point is that 
you have to get to the level of conscious competence, right? So conscious competence, or when you're on the level of conscious competence, like, yeah, you have the skills and the, and the ability, but you, but you cannot do it unless you are paying attention. Any moment of inattention, then you're going to make errors. You're going to have more failure. You're not at that next level. Uh, you're not at that, that next level because you cannot do it unconsciously. You have to do it consciously. As long as you have to do it consciously, you still haven't mastered whatever it is that you are, whatever it is that you're trying to move into or move up through. But let's assume a person gets to that level where you have the conscious competence. Conscious competence means that, you know, yeah, you can do it, but you can only do it when you're paying very strict attention. But let's move past that. So when a person finally gets to the point where they don't have to be, uh, conscious of it all the time. Now they're at the highest level. They're at the peak level of whatever the game is, unconscious, competent, unconscious, comp. Bruce Lee, I always use him as an example for this. You know, someone who just automatically has the response, the reaction time, knowing the right thing to do under all circumstances. And you have these forces working at a very subconscious level, unconscious level, but therefore at the deepest level that is utilizing the competency that you've developed. So it's just automatic, natural, instantaneous, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so that's when you're at the highest level. You're at the, at the highest level. So that's with everything, everything we're talking about. It doesn't matter. It can be politics, it can be academics, it can be business, it can be cultural art, creativity, et cetera, all of those kinds of things, right? And so, so once you know what the performance and what the rules are of the game <clears throat> and what is required in order to achieve the aims of the game, and one of the highest ways and best ways to do that is know who the apex performer in your game is. Who is the apex performer? Then you should model yourself after them right? Because they have demonstrated what it takes to get from the bottom to the top. And the more you master and perform in conformance with what the game requires, then that's how you're going to get to the top of it. That's how you're going to get to the top of it. You know, I think about this Dion Warwick song, you know, wishing, hoping, and praying. Uh, that's not going that's not, that's not the thing. You have to know what you have to do and you have to master and conform to what's expected of the game, what the game expects of you, and then you're going to have greater success. Okay, so that's it. Now, as you can see here, it's like this applies to any and everything. This applies. I just I just put any other here. It just doesn't matter. It just, you could put a label to each one of these boxes. It can be father or mother, you know, a businessman, entrepreneur, a leader of an organization, uh, whatever, a cook, mathematician, engineer, dentist, lawyer, just doesn't matter because you're going to have to do the same thing no matter what it is. And once you understand that that's what you have to do no matter what it is that you're doing, the only thing for you to do is do it. Only that there's nothing that, will, you know, Allah's will is over everything. But in the scheme of things, Allah doesn't have anything against you. I don't think anybody who's, who's who's on earth is sitting here talking. I don't think nobody is big enough for, for a lot to be, uh, I'm mad at you. <laughs> no, not if you take this time even to be on this program. It's like, hey, a lot ain't mad at you. Okay. So therefore, and the universe ain't mad at you. It's like, it's all yours. So it's like, what do you want? What do you want? And what are you doing to get it? Okay. Let's move on. All right, so this is this should be even more simplified since I've already used the NBA as as a model. You know, in the postseason, right? In the postseason, you have these these four rounds to get to, right? First round is four games, and therein you have to achieve those four stages of competency at that level. You have to solve the problem of whoever your opponent is at the first level. That's what you do. The people who move on to the second round are the people who solve the problems of the first round. And your problem is whoever you're faced with. And so you have to move from unconscious, incompetent, conscious, incompetent, conscious, competent, unconscious, competent, so that you can be on the top of whatever that level is, right? And then you have to do the same thing in the semifinals, right? And I, I'm, I'm telling you, and the rest of it is pretty clear. It's just repetition. 
It's like, I man, my Kofi is off <laughs> to whoever is the champion. Whoever is the champion, they deserve it. They deserve it because they solve all the problems of every opponent in every series on every level. They deserve it. Now, anybody else, you know, you can get mad, you can get pissed off, you can say, I don't like that. Hey, go on home. Go, go, go on somewhere because. Whoever stands on the mountaintop of that and raises that trophy, they earned it. They earned it from elementary school. You understand what I'm saying? That's like, that's what's like, okay, so enough of that. So, and so, but that, that applies to everything. So you, you, yourself, where's your mountaintop? Where's your mountaintop? What are you? What mountain are you trying to stand on top of? Because the the plan, the pattern, the blueprint, the rules, the principles, the paradigm, the algorithm—I just laid it out to you. It's like, go, go for it. Very important. So this note came from the reading that we opened this uh, this evening with. <clears throat> See, a kind of wave of possibility percolates upward through our cognitive structure, getting filtered according to the expectations and beliefs in higher level. So if you if if you don't have if your beliefs and expectations are not such that it opens the way to move to the next level, then that's where you stop. That's where you get off the bus. All right, <clears throat> run very quickly through this. In the Quran, 53, 37 through 40, uh, and Allah speaks of uh, Abraham. I'll just read an expression of it. It says, and of Abraham who fulfilled his obligations, namely that no bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another, that man can have nothing but what he strives for, that the fruit of his striving will soon come into sight. Okay, let's abstract from that. We've, we've, we've done this, but abstracted from each one of these verses is again the mindset and the behavior that's required to again achieve a goal achieve an aim to realize something that you may uh, imagine or aspire to number one this verse 30, 53 37 in meaning is telling us be a person of faith science and integrity be a person of faith science and integrity verse 38 in abstract, in essence, is telling us accept personal responsibility. It's not somebody else's fault. That old white man, uh, Trump, them old Republicans, these folks down here in Georgia, <laughs> whatever. It's like, hey, <laughs> accept personal responsibility. The universe don't belong to nobody on earth. The laws of creation belongs to nobody on earth. All those are the levers of power for us. In the nature of creation, nobody can stop us. Okay. Uh, verse thirty-nine, abstracted. Set your goal. <coughs> Set your goal plan. Do you have one? Because the plan, and we covered this, whatever, many weeks ago. The plan is a mechanism, just as surely as any machine. Please understand that. See, spirituality is the physics that we don't yet understand, okay? <clears throat> and one of the things about spirituality from a metaphysical point of view, so material physics, quantum physics, talking about material things. Spiritual physics is talking about, quote, unquote, immaterial things in the way that we understand material. So a plan is a mechanism. When you write a plan, you have built a machine in creative language. In the language of creation, you just built a vehicle. It's a plan. And that vehicle affects things in creation and in yourself and yourself as a part of creation. So set your goal, your plan, visualize in order to virtualize your goal. So that goes back to 
the imagination. And that has to do with expectation. But I want you to also understand this. Listen, you already you already know this, right? Uh, uh, I think I, I had a I had a thought about lemon meringue pie the other day, and and my jaws <laughs> start getting tight like I was like I was getting that lemon zest in my is happening right now <laughs> getting that lemon zest in my mouth. What what? What made that chemical reaction happen in my body? The visualization, the thought of it. The thought of it brought about changes in my biology. Well, that's what happens with belief and expectations and imagination. Your bodily mechanisms say, oh, okay, well, he, he wants a lemon meringue pie. Oh, he's thinking about lemon meringue pie. Okay, well, let's, let's get ready. Right. Okay. Well, that's what happens in our body. That's what happens in the creation. It's sort of like, what do you want? What are you aspiring to? The creation is just, it's, it's almost like in our case, you know, creation is kind of like twiddling his thumbs. Like, okay. Well, I guess he don't want to do nothing. So let's just hang out. No. Set your goal plan. Visualize in order to virtualize. Because as soon as you begin to think of it, you begin to visualize it, and especially when you plan it, it is actually coming into virtual existence. And then verse 40 tells us what happens next. Behave in alignment with you. Says so had nothing happened without behavior. Quran says, do they think that they were going to be rewarded for other than their deeds? This is God saying. What, what, what do you think? You think all, oh, you think all you have to do is just Think about something. All you have to do is just imagine it hard enough, long enough, and then it's just going to show up at your door. Get off of that. Get off of that. That's distract you until you die. Get off of that. Make, make a plan. <laughs> Evaluate the plan. If you, if you make the plan based on the powers and the laws of the heavens and the earth, right? So therefore, the plan is true. So the plan is not a quote-unquote pipe dream. The plan is real on the basis of the context of the rules and the laws of the heavens and the earth. It's like, boom, you want to do this, you got to do that. <clears throat> and a trustworthy plan is that mechanism, is that machinery, is that vehicle uh, through which physically and metaphysically what you are aspiring to and imagining that's it's going to arrive by virtue of the action, quote unquote, and interaction between yourself and the plan. All right. And when you behave, then then the fruit of this strive will soon be seen. It means you have to behave in alignment with your goal or plan. Right? Uh, we've already gone through this. The wave of possibilities is the source of the fuel of universal creative uh, creativity and originality. Without it, the cognitive uh, activity in higher levels will grind to a halt. There would be no novelty feeding it from below. So if you don't believe at the next level and at the next level and at the next level, then it's never going to re be realized because you're going to stop at the level that you stop expecting and stop believing. Ah, oh, this ain't gonna work. Okay, everything just stopped. There are some things that you that you have to do in relationship to obstacles to the worldly plan, worldly plans, activities, etc. There's always gonna be something. Life happens, other things happen, and you have to make adjustments. I don't know if we're gonna get to some detail on that. I don't know, we'll see how far my comments go here. Oh, okay. Here's, here's another thing. Is another uh, creation supported social logic, scripture supported social logic. The the social logic for what I've been talking about, I want to show it to you also in fundamentals that we embrace as Muslims. All right. So you see there on, on the left, you have the star, moon, sun. Of course, you should recognize in that Abraham. His vision, star, moon, sun. That star, moon, and sun is a symbol of what God taught Abraham of the powers and the laws in the heavens and earth that he might have certitude. So he had the expectations and beliefs rooted in his very being 
by virtue of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him. He was supremely confident. Yaqeen. He had conviction totally. And that's a sign of where we have to be in terms of whatever it is that we're trying to realize. I mean, do you really believe in yourself in that matter? If you don't really believe in yourself in that matter, that's why it's not moving. It's not going to happen. But if you really believe in yourself in that matter, it's already happening. But how can you be certain? And what is the justification for you believing in yourself in that matter? What do you know about what it is you're trying to do? All right. So you need to get the star knowledge, the moon knowledge, the sun knowledge of whatever it is that you're, you're doing, whatever. I'm not going to try to go into all the interpretations of all this, uh, but at, at, at best, simply, I will put, put it this way. Star is the uh, intuitive, instinctive knowledge. Do you have the nature? Do you have the predisposition for what it is you're talking about? Right. If you don't really have the predisposition, you haven't even gotten the star knowledge of what you're talking about. But if you do have the, the the predisposition, the impulse, the instinct for it, right? Do you have political instincts? If you're thinking about politics, do you have business instincts? If you're talking about business, you're not academic instinct. You're talking about academic achievement, blah, blah, blah. You have to have the instinct for it. If you don't have it and nobody has told you unsolicited, man, you got some strong political instincts or you got some strong economic instincts or you got some strong academic instincts. If nobody's ever told you that, in your life, then you probably don't have them. I'm just saying. So, and it's the same way for business. Oh man, you got a you, you got a nose for business. Maybe somebody told you that sometime, right? Just okay, let's go with the rest of that. We're gonna move on. So, but then you move on to the moon, right? So what's the moon? The moon is basically like the philosophy of what it is that you have an instinct for. You found it, you had an instinct for it. Okay, now, so what's the philosophy about it? everything? Listen, everything has a business has a philosophy. Philosophy, you know, politics, governance has a philosophy. Philosophy, huh? Academics has a philosophy. Culture has a philosophy, right? And every all the dimensions of it have a where. What game are you playing? Remember, aim, game, hierarchy. Boom. All that, this is knowledge that you have to have. And then you have to move up the star, moon, sun ladder in order to achieve and arrive at the level of knowledge to have the expectation and beliefs that fit the game you're playing and where you're trying to go, right? So so you have the impulse, instincts, then you have the philosophy slash ideology for it. And then moving up to the sun, the sun is the science of it. What is the objective science for whatever it is you're trying to do? Just a, I don't care. Whatever. I don't know. You want to make vacuum cleaners. I'm just saying anything. Okay. What's the science of vacuum cleaners? Do you know that? Right? <clears throat> okay. And all of this, of course, fits with uh, the schema that we see in the life of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First squeeze, second squeeze, third squeeze. So the Prophet... Squeeze number one moved him from level one to level two. Squeeze number two moved him from level two to level three. Squeeze number three moved him from level three to level four. And so it is, that's how we get to the top. We get to the apex of what it is, whatever it is by traversing all of these, all of these capacities. And when you think about these squeezes, right? Squeeze mean you have to face the challenges on each level. Squeeze number one is Osri Yusra. Squeeze number two, Osri Yusra. Squeeze number three, Osri Yusra. Difficulty, relief. Success is a set of problems solved, according to I am Pei, first person singular. You should look that documentary up. It's a good one. <coughs> but it says success is a success is a set of problems solved. We talk about these NBA games, right? So it's like these coaches, the difference is you got you got a seven game possible series, right? Game number one is that is most people say that it's a feeler. I'm feeling them out, right? And then now you go to the film and then you go to the to, to the recap of the game, et cetera, and you make adjustments. You make the adjustments respecting the nature because if this guy has been a problem for us in game number one, then we need to make some adjustments that solves that problem in game number two. 
If they give us a new problem in game number two that we don't solve, then we're going to lose game number two, and the rest goes on, right? So who who's most successful? The ones that's most successful are the one who solved the problem of their opposition, and that's how it is with us. If you're a chef, you have a certain set of problems for chefs. If you are a, a, an academic, you have a certain set of problems as an academic, blah, blah, blah. The point is you have to be able to solve the problems on the level that you want to move off of, all right? And that's why we go back to the unconscious incompetent, conscious competent, conscious uh, conscious incompetent, conscious competent, unconscious competent. Once you know all of the problems related to the progression that you're trying to make, and we didn't, we, I didn't put the model right here, but I want to go back and remind you, you have to find... Who's the apex performer in the area that you're trying to rise in? Who's the who's the object? Who's the model? Right? So people talk about men mentorship. You talk about models, examples, et cetera. And we have so much access to every and practically anything available that you don't have to live with the person or go knock on their door or call them, get them to talk to you. They're, they're online. They're everywhere, you know? And you can make it real for yourself. All right. So, mustakbal, mustakbal. Well, now we're talking about very uh, here at this point. Mustakbal is talking about the future. So now, what we're talking about is making history. Right at this moment, we're talking about making history. You want to make history, okay? Let me tell you how to, how to make history. Mustakbal is a noun which means the future. Mim damasin sukun te feta ba feta lam. Right, mustakbal. Akbala is the fourth form of the verbal root kabala. This gives us the noun form mustakbal, which means the future. It means, this is a definition, huh? to give one's attention to something, to dedicate oneself, to apply oneself, to engage in, to take an interest in, to embark upon. Form four also engenders indirect cause. You're going to cause something that's going to cause something else, right? Uh, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran says that he hoovers between a man and his heart. So this qabala is also an anagram for qalb, qaf, lam, ba. Uh, but the main, main thing is, is simply to understand that the ultimate decision for what is arrived at, what is achieved, what is accomplished, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never forget that. You can plan, you can have a perfect plan, just like Jacob and the plans for his sons. It don't all end by one gate. He did what he was told to do, but Allah had another plan. So always follow what you know, but always recognize it's all in Shia Allah, right? <clears throat> so what this uh, Kabbalah tells us is that any human being who wants a good future must give their attention to it. They must dedicate themselves to it. They must apply themselves. They must engage themselves. They must take an interest in what they aspire to. They must embark upon it in the present time with a vision of their future life in mind. Some of you already know that we're talking about what Imam said. This is that that was the literal definition and translation for behavior of the definition of the future. If you want to create the future, if you want to manifest and bring something about in the future, well, then these are the things that you have to do just by the definition of the Quranic term for future. You have to dedicate yourself to, you have to apply yourself, you have to engage yourself, you have to increase and enhance and follow your interest in it, and you have to embark upon it in present time in the interest of provision for the future. Here are two levels of making history. He said, oh, today we made history. In that sense, it means that we will have accomplished something up to that moment that hadn't been accomplished. We made history. First, first black president, blah, blah. Right? Made history. <clears throat> hadn't been done before. I know there's some teachers, well, we've had about five other black presidents, but that one drop of blood thing, but we're not going to go into that today. <laughs> okay. So made history in as much as we will have accomplished what upon that moment hadn't been accomplished. That's making history. But now we're talking about making history consciously through our own capacity, through our own capability. 
we will make history in as much as we will have successfully executed our plans. When you put your plans to work, your good plans to work, right? That plan represents your virtual intended future. That's what's on the paper. Your virtual intended future, that mechanism called a plan, there's your future right there. That's the seed right there, right? And you will you accomplish that, it will be like following the recipe to make a cake. And when you achieve what the plan holds out for you, then you will also have made history. Imam Muhammad, he says, this is the future that we are building. And Allah says, look to the future. Don't value this present life over the future, but look to the future. Let your aim, your object be toward the future. That's the orientation in the Muslim life. That is the, that is, the Muslim lives with hope for accomplishing the goals that is in front of him. We are always supposed to be going towards something as a goal, as an object to achieve in front of us. That's our sensitivity. That should be our concern. That's the way we live. We don't live just in the present. There are three tenses, aren't there? In fact, there are four. There's the past tense, the present tense, the future tense, and this one that you didn't know about, control tense. Well, we want to move in every tense. We want present, we want past, future, and control tense. So control tense is when you design a life for yourself, back to that plan, design a life for yourself with an objective in mind, and you marshal everything to complement that, and to support that, man, you're on your own time then. You are not in the past. You are not in the present. When you perceive that way, you are really in the future. But you have stepped ahead of the ordinary concept of future time. You have stepped into control time. Alhamdulillah. Imam Muhammad at Elijahville. So, brothers and sisters, not going into not going into this further, but this essentially is going to be the end of it. It is simple. It is so. The, it's it's in the doing, right? It is simple. I think I have this one other plate that I can. No, no, it's not. It's not there and available. So let me duck out before I get wrapped into something I don't want to get wrapped into right now. Uh, so this is going to be it. I'm going to call Miss Camila back into the room, as she says. And we're gonna close out. I'm gonna I'm gonna tick down through some of these some of these comments and you go. Any any feedback, question, comment, whatever. I'm just going to um no not no nothing in particular. I, I think that is um that there's never really many close out comments to make other than to, you know, I, I feel like there needs to be this moment where we create a a real Q and A opportunity um, yeah, yeah. to see and hear these the feedback from our listeners um, because that yeah. also helps us to know that is the information being absorbed like or are you and I just having a conversation like we want to hear it from <laughs> yeah, our yeah. listeners we want to structure um, something to ensure that we're giving you what you need um, because this excites us right and so you know yeah. we want to make sure we're get, filling in the blanks for you so that you can experience this joyous experience of seeking out this mm -hmm. level of understanding and have an opportunity to apply it to our daily life um, so yeah that would be exciting yeah, so we have to encourage all of you. I mean, since since I've since so much of what I've been doing, I've been doing these PowerPoint uh, parts of it. So yeah. more people have have how can you say moved off of the blog talk platform and onto the the Facebook YouTube uh, platform. Mm -hmm. But uh, those of you who are checked in on blog talk, you are in the best position to have feedback, comments, and questions because we can take it. Uh, right away uh, from you. So I'm going to open that opportunity to push one on your phone if you want to make a comment before we walk away. But alhamdulillah, uh, that's pretty much for us today. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going <laughs> to I will also <laughs> declare the conclusion of that particular concept 
the introduction to spiritual physics uh, imagination. I, I'm going to consider that a closed subject right now. And then, mashallah, we'll come with something new, inshallah, next week. Inshallah. So hearing nothing new from you, boo, we're going to move on. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Amina. Allah's peace be on you. Have a wonderful evening. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Alaykum. 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 Alaykum.